BC Place. Absolutely critical for the Calgary Stampeders to gain some confidence against this Lions team. And the Lions will open the second quarter with a punt. And it's off the side of McCallum's foot, and Calgary will once again have great field position. That kick went straight out of bounds. Yeah, out of bounds between the 20, so that's going to be a penalty against the Lions. Walk this thing even further that's into a, BC territory. That's a 27-yard punt with a penalty attached to the end of it. That was a kick with the wind at his back. Legal kick off out of bounds. BC number four will apply a 10-yard penalty from where it went out of bounds. First down. So it's a net 17-yard kick. And Calgary's first down, the BC 33. Um, the reaction from Paul McCallum to that punt says it all. <laughs> Knowing his team needed a big punt from him there. Really is. Kevin Glenn back in a quarterback for Calgary. Under pressure, throws it off. And drops it off to Lewis, who pounces ahead. And a late flag comes down on BC. And Lewis, who bounced ahead for a couple. Oh, Kevin Glenn looked like he was in all sorts of trouble in that backfield, but managed to find old reliable Nick Lewis. Broke one tackle right near the line of scrimmage and turned and that Lewis, one into a first down. Lewis and Khalif Mitchell are jawing, and Mitchell, of course, is just back in the BC lineup. For disciplinary reasons, he was suspended after, after an offensive play, tweet. From a major foul, BC number 96. We'll go up half the distance to the goal, first down. So a 15-yard penalty to Mitchell. Nick Lewis clearly down and back up on his feet. I believe Mitchell made the play. First down, Calgary from the 12. And corners around the right side, fits down the one-yard line. Brought down there by Anton McKenzie. But should have another first down. It'll be first and goal, Calgary. A great run there for John Cornish. As the Stampeders continue to dominate here. Picked up 11 yards on Matt Carey. Calgary's last win at home against BC was in 2009. So Stampeders taking out three years of frustration in this first half. This has been as one-sided as you'll see. And now Paul Levi Mitchell is in for Calgary. On the short yardage play, Mitchell throws it up to the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown. Corey Mace. And now all three Calgary quarterbacks have a touchdown pass in the game. Just an unbelievable start to this ball game for the Calgary Stampeders. Corey Mace, the defensive tackle, native of Fort Moody, BC. Lines up as a tight end on this play. Just releases to the deep corner out right here. Everybody expects him to block down. Nobody follows. The big fella takes off on that route. Okay. Never mind the Belmont. The horses run the Boston Marathon. Calgary, 31 nothing in the first half. All eight penalties in the game have gone against the BC Lions. Corey Mace has his first career CFL touchdown. All three Calgary quarterbacks have thrown a touchdown pass in the game. Uh, that last drive was just gift wrapped by the BC Lions with all the penalties. And now Tim Brown takes another kickoff up close to the 40-yard line. The only BC Lion who's had any kind of productive evening so far. Now the question, Dwayne, is this. Does BC stay with Riley or does Thomas DeMarco get a look at some point? Well, it, it was interesting because talking to Coach Mike Benavides yesterday, there's 
really no plan to use Thomas DeMarco unless it was a situation where typically you would put in your backup quarterback. Score out of hand one way or the other. Well, I mean, it, it's a little early to start looking to, to make that change now to, to throw Thomas DeMarco into the fire for his first CFL action. But into the second half, it's got to be a consideration. Take the end around, Riley throws. And the pass is complete to G. Roy Simon to the 51-yard line. Eight of 12 on the play for a BC first down. Riley did play in some adverse weather while playing at Central Washington. They played a number of playoff games in snow, but not that much cold. He wasn't used to sub-zero temperature. This game, not like last week, which would have been played in a snow globe. And here's a direct snap. And Harris lost the football after he was down. Here again, Jermaine Franklin. Gord, strong side linebacker for the Stampeders. Keon Raymond has left and gone to the room. No details on what's wrong with him just yet, but we will get an update at halftime. And you mentioned earlier three different quarterbacks for the Stampeders threw for touchdowns in one half. Nick Lewis was interested. When was the last time that happened? I haven't had an answer for him, but perhaps we will uh, in the second half. Moisty must be on, uh, on, the, on the lookout right now. Statistician Dave Moore will have to look that up. We're scrambling here, setting the Calgary Stampeders back book on fire, looking up biggest leads, biggest halves, biggest quarters. Well, and, and it's easy to imagine, especially when you consider some of the quarterbacks that have played in Calgary over the years, three quarterbacks throwing a touchdown pass in the same game, but three in the same half. Outside, BC number 88, five yard penalty, repeat second down. Ninth penalty of the game, all against the Lions. Just an uncharacteristic lack of discipline, lack of execution, lack of poise, quite frankly, from the Lions. And at some point, you think that Benavides will just take this game video and leave it behind. Here comes the rush. Riley under pressure, hammered there and dropped. Anwar Stewart has the sack. That's his second of the game. Well, Anwar Stewart doing a pretty good job reviving his career here in Calgary, where it all began for this young man. Maybe not so young anymore. 97 at the top of your screen. Stewart attended his first training camp with Calgary back in 2000 before eventually joining the Montreal Alouettes. And McCallum's kick taken by Armstead at the 30-yard line. And Armstead out of bounds to the 38. Wendy's Friday Night Football back to Calgary after this. Benavides wants his team to play well down the stretch. Have to reboot that up. Maybe right next here. week, Mike. Maybe next week at home. This is Saskatchewan. Yeah, there's going to have to be a whole lot of regrouping taking place at halftime for the BC Lions. Back to the ground to John Curtis. Curtis with the first down and across the 50 to the 52-yard line and a gain of 14 yards recorded. Good patience there from John Cornish. He's waiting for that hole to open up. Got 46 yards rushing already in the game, so less than 100 yards away from Kwong's single-season record for rushing yards by a Canadian. Nice second level block there from the left tackle, Edward Harrison. Now Glenn's up throwing over the top, and the pass falls incomplete. Trying to find the fullback, Rob Cote. Cote, a guy who's a very good receiver in his junior football days. Victoria Rebels, converted to a fullback here with the Stampeders. Obviously enjoyed a very successful career. Good last, pretty good last week in the snow. By the way, Calgary's win last week was seven turnovers, the second time in the last decade that a team had won a game and committing six or more turnovers. Mark 
comfortable. Twist for the Calgary Stampeders in that weather. Glenn over the middle to Nick Lewis. And Lewis flips the ball out after another first down reception. And no one better on second down to move the sticks for you than Nick Lewis, who is the league leader in second down catches for a first down. Well, just Mr. Consistency for the Calgary Stampeders. Over a thousand yards every year he's been in the Canadian Football League. Since his arrival in 2004, leading the league in receptions this season. And the toss goes to Cornish, who fights his way inside the 40 yard line. Cornish with 13 touchdowns coming in, one off the league lead. And of all the people looking on who can't be enjoying this, the former head coach and GM of the Calgary Stampeders, Wally Buono. This has got to be a tough pill for him to swallow, even though his team's wrapped up first place. Coming here and seeing this, you played you played for Wally. There's no off days for him. Yeah, no, uh, no question that I'm surprised you actually can't see steam coming from Wally's ears right now with this kind of performance in this situation. You, you always want to peak going into the postseason. Even though you've wrapped up first place, you want to prove that you're worthy of first place, especially playing a divisional rival, playing a team that you might see in the playoffs. You do want a message to be sent. And in this game, it has been strictly the Calgary Stampeders. And by the way, his former protege, John Huffnagel, is now second on the Stampeders' all-time win list for coaches. Well behind Wally, who of course is the CFL's all-time leader overall in coaching wins. John Huffdangle for several years. There they were before the game. Old friends, John Huffdangle became Wally Buono's offensive coordinator when Wally took over as head coach here back in 1990. And what a year that John Huffdangle has endured here in Calgary. He said in his entire football career he's never seen anything like it. Calgary has 14 players right now on the nine game injured list. They have used 70 players so far this season. Only five players have started every game for them. And the, I think the injury bug has been a, a league wide thing this year. On second down, Glenn throws. And here's Lewis again. And there's another second down reception for a first. And we've got someone injured on the sidelines. A uh, huge knockout block there by Jabari Arthur on Koji Mwamba. This is the Lions free safety stepped up to make the tackle. Arthur came in from the side. Jabari Arthur heading over to see if Koji was okay over there on the sideline. And the Stampeders were the first to show concern and wave the trainers over. Yeah. Well, it's a great reaction here from the Stampeders medical staff to get in there and not wait for the Lions to have to get across the field. Arthur right on the left side of your screen, number 81. Perfectly clean block, just more, but didn't see it coming. You see Karan Williams comes in after Jabari Arthur. Stick up for his teammate a little bit. Not to get another flag for the Lions there. So Mwamba is slowly setting up, but more bad news for the Lions. These most lovable couple returns. That's right. Ice loves Coco is back. <laughs> it's back with her seat. You can't make me laugh at this stuff. And the little dog too. And all new Ice loves Coco Sunday at 10, only on E. <laughs> that was all your fault, Dwayne. I did nothing. Ice does love Coco Gordon. At the end of the too. play, we had a major foul, unnecessary roughness, BC number nine, for a 15-yard penalty and a first down. Tenth penalty of the game, all against the BC Lions, and the Karan Williams play was detected, so first down Calgary from the 15. And Glenn looks to the end zone, and the pass is incomplete. Trying to find Rombie Bryant. 
One of the few things that hasn't been dead on for the Calgary Stampeders so far in this ball game, but Kevin Glenn going to the end zone showing no indication that they're going to take the foot off the gas pedal in this ball game. By the way, the Corey Mays touchdown reception. Now 11 Calgary receivers, so-called, with at least one touchdown catch this year. And that's partly because of all the turnover that John Huffingle's team has had to endure. By the way, Larry Taylor could be back next week. Second down. Glenn fires, and Lewis can't make the one-handed catch. Lions will dodge a bullet here as the field goal team comes on. Nick Lewis sticks the big mid up and almost pulled this one down. <laughs> So Paradez is on to try another field goal with under seven to go in the second quarter. And the Stampeder lead is now 34. This is our league brought to you by Nissan. Well, we are here at McMahon Stadium, and many people from outside Calgary aren't aware that we're on the campus of the University of Calgary, and the Calgary Dinosaurs, who are a perennial power in the CIS, are here. So, if you're fortunate enough to play well for the Dinos, you can make your way right down the hall to the Stampeder locker room down at the south end of the stadium. And these two have peacefully coexisted in excellence for a long time here in Calgary. They sure have, and many have made that trip from the dino dressing room the stampeder dressing room most recently a couple guys in uniform tonight matt walter and anthony parker here's harris on the carry and harris with riley leading the block he gets around the corner and andrew harris finally gets loose in the calgary territory and forced out of bounds after a 25 yard gain well the guy that we've been suggesting could be the spark for the bc lions in this miserable start provides them with their biggest offensive play 25 yard run there from harris actually comes into the game leading bc in receiving yards as well as rushing yards and harris with a chance as he's the league leader in yards from scrimmage the first Can the last canadian rather do that terry evanson back in 1967. now the fake to harris and riley throws that pass complete to courtney taylor Check that, Ernest Jackson. And a gain of one on the play. So Ernest Jackson going to hold down that short side wide receiver spot the rest of the way this season. He and Kerry Johnson have kind of been jockeying for it since Johnson came back from broken arm, but Johnson released earlier this week, so it's Jackson's job the rest of the way. Second down, here comes the rush down, goes right, and the ball comes free. Passed on by Anwar Stewart. There's a flag down on the play. And the BC Lions, who were talking about the fact they'd only turned the ball over 19 times this, this season. If this stands, it'll be the third of the first half. And Charleston Hughes, who leads the league with five forced fumbles, knocked that one out. Now, what's the penalty? Offside, Calgary number eight. Five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. So the first Stampeder penalty negates the turnover. And Fred Bennett didn't like the call. Well, Bennett at the corner lined up too tight to the line. In that press coverage. Fred Bennett. Preparing to get into that press coverage. Now second and short. And Riley throws complete to G.Y. Simon right at the first down marker. By the way, Calgary, that's first penalty in this game, was only flagged four times last week in that game against Hamilton. Mentioned G. Roy Simon back in the BC lineup. 
Simon. Tweak that hamstring. It had some troubles with the other hamstring earlier in the year, but just in stalking his defender. To block on an Andrew Harris run. Tweak the right hamstring as you saw him grab the back of the leg. So he's sat out the last three weeks. Lions just trying to get him a little bit of action. Tuned up before the playoffs. G. Roy Simon comes into this game with 657 receiving yards. Well off his usual 1,000 yard pace. And he's that short of a BC first down. Lions have just three first downs in the first half. G. Roy Simon in that thousand yard streak of his, nine straight years, over a thousand. It appears that's going to come to an end this season. Get Calgary's Nick Lewis the longest active streak. BC Gambling on third and short. And did Riley get it? He was hit early by DeMonte Bolden, but Riley again bobbled the ball, and did he get the first down on the second effort? Well, it looked like the snap had some 